Hello there, my name is Adam Bokta and in this video I'm going to show you how to properly fight as an Alberta Ceratops. Now any future update may change the way you play as this creature. My time with this creature are limited and I'm just gonna say I've been missing out. This creature is a beast. In this video we'll be going over the following topics. Stick to the end and you'll learn how you can choose creature for one of these videos. We have two options for head abilities, the first one being the standard attack, brain cell loss. The second ability are more brain cell loss. You spend more efforts and stamina to kill more brain cells. We have two options for sensibilities. The first one being last ditch effort and dying breath. The second one are group activity that increases your damage output and the amount of fun you can have in groups. Two options for front limb. The first one making you able to turn quicker should you regret your heading in life. The second one are just you putting your foot down and with a lot of vigor. Resilient scales and tough scouts, pretty basic for heights. First ability on leg are strong legs and if you use it, you're stupid. The charge ability is very sad, though even though it's strong, it's even difficult to hit the broad side of a dasp. For leg abilities, you have back kick, which are basically just a no in case if anyone tries to dock you from behind and give you the back shot. For his abilities, you have enrage. Unfortunately, you have excellent anger management, so it only lasts so long. To be completely honest, this is the arsenal I recommend you use against any creature, no matter what tier. Head slam causes too much unnecessary waste in stamina. Stampede are only good for in groups. Stomp aren't necessary because you got back kick. Bleed and Venom would have had a greater effect if you were a slower creature. And who even uses strong legs? Out of the subspecies, in my opinion, the stamina recovery were the best one. You see, the default damage output and armor on this creature are already really good. In the case with armor, you can increase that further with tough scouts. In the case with damage output, you can increase that with sense and call abilities. It is indeed a powerful and tanky creature. After all, it's only about half the size of its much larger cousin, the Eotrike. The only area where it's kinda lacking are stamina regeneration. Depending on the situation, more particularly prolonged fights, recovering stamina is a key component to win the fight. For terrain compatibility and fighting style. When it comes to fighting lower tier to mid tiers, you should try to fight them in a more closed off area. Fighting opponents of that caliber usually means that you will have the advantage, stat wise at least meaning that you should try and fight lower to mid tier in a head to head battle. Using the terrain to limit their movement will make that easier. Against high tiers and apexes, that means the complete opposite. For those fights you need to do hits and run, which can mean a prolonged fight. This comes back to why it's good to choose the stamina regeneration subspecies. Hits and run means that you will be moving around a lot, and if you cannot quickly recover that stamina, you'll only be a sheep waiting for slaughter. Again, when fighting low tiers, it's good to have an area that limits their movement. When fighting them, take a defensive stance. Let them run into your attacks. When you see an opening, be it them getting stuck in the environment or on you, that's when you should attack. Also, in the case of raptors or any pouncer, you can back yourself into the corner and then the only way they can attack you is by running straight into your horns. Or you can use the water strategy, go in the water and while they are in swimming animation that's when you attack. Also be mindful before deciding using the charge attack. Fighting low tier means that you will fight speedy little demons. They will have a rather easy time to dodge your charge attack. Only use it when you're certain you'll land a hit. Against mid tiers, do the same. You will have a bit easier time getting them into a head to head clash due to them not being as fast as low tiers. Your charge attack aren't always guaranteed to land a hit, but it is good to open with. Again, not always guaranteed to hit. But again, as long as you force them into a head-to-head -head clash, you should have the advantage. 
The less room they have to work with, the better for you. Against Apexes, it is good to start off big. Of course, avoid any counter attacks made against you. If you can, you should try and bait your enemies into using their stamina draining abilities, be it attacks or calls. You have nice agility and nice speed, so if you believe you can, you should try and tail ride. Also, remember to give an extra kick when you run out of the tail riding. Be mindful about your stamina bar. Fights like these can last a while, and you don't know if the opponent decides to go on the offense, have stamina enough to run away. Once your opponent are low enough, that's when you can go in for the finishing blow. If you have any specific creature you want me to cover, go to my community post, find the most recent post about the matter and all the information should say there. If you like this video, then please show your support to the channel. And with that, I'll bid you guys adieu.